Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Kajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, your one-stop website for all the day's latest church apostasy and end-time news. That's right, folks. Get to tradcatnight.blogspot.com daily. It's updated daily. Make sure your friends, family members, church members are aware of this apostolate. Trad Cat Night is featured all over the alternative media circuit, and I'm doing my best to keep you up to date on all the latest happenings from around the world as we head closer to the fruition of the third secret of Fatima, the false prophet coming, the Antichrist coming. A lot is going to happen even over the next few years as we dig ourselves deeper into the new world order. The message of Fatima becomes ever more prevalent and ever more alive. Now, folks, make sure you subscribe to Trad Cat Night right here on YouTube. Click the notification button. And in the event that my YouTube goes down, which is always possible, uh, please check out Trad Cat Night across the plethora of platforms that I am on, whether it's Veterans Today, Minds.com, PubeTube, BitChute, Steam It, DTube. If you're on your phone, you can access Trad Cat Night podcast through iTunes. Google Play, player.fm, and the main one is soundcloud.com. Uh, make sure you get to that. And for additional information f- to this apostolate, visit tradcatnight.org. There also is a forum page. Many of you are not aware of tradcatnight.freeforums.net. Tradcatnight.freeforums.net. And of course, you can follow Trad Cat Night across any major social media outlet whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and I encourage you all, send a request. If you are on Facebook, to the traditional Catholic group page, it's about a year old, 18,500 members, going strong, very interactive. And folks, for this particular video, comments will be available yet again. But folks, as you know, no trolling. No anti-Eric comments, no anti-Catholic comments, Protestants, spare me your comments. They won't be seen here on this website. Error has no public rights. And if we were truly in a Catholic slash Christian country, Protestant errors would not be permitted publicly as they ought not be. Now, folks, um, what I'd also like to do, if I could, before we dive right into it, is just let everyone know this weekend... Uh, For the live call-in shows, I've got three people locked up already. I'm working on one more, but Saturday night we should have uh, Father Voigt back on the program as well as Brian McCall from Catholic Family News. He took over for John Veneri. I'm sure most of you are aware uh, of his work. So Saturday, Father Voigt, Brian McCall. Sunday, I've got Dr. David Duke coming on the early slot, and I'm working on one more uh, special guest, potentially. But I want to throw this out there to the listening audience, and I hope you all are uh, listening attentively, uh, especially people like Chris Gagne, or Don and Patty from New Mexico, or how about John Kay from Canada. A lot of you who um, certainly phone in to uh, the live call-in shows and or who I email pretty consistently, if you'd like to co-host with me, Again, that time slot might be open from 8.45 to 10 p.m. So maybe I could get, well, whoever would like to really come on and talk who's been following this apostolate. Uh, I believe I have the capability of handling uh, more than one co-host. I want to say it's five or six. So maybe we could just have a bunch of people on, traditionalists, and we could all just have a good conversation. So I think that would be something a little bit different to spice up uh, the live call-in show. So get back to me, all those who are interested uh, in joining me and co-hosting, talking about the crisis in the church, talking about Francis, and so on and so forth. Now, but before I get into today's talk, which is going to concern, when they shall say peace, our Lord warns, blessed Sister Aello, what exactly is next? And I'm going to be examining the message of uh, Good Friday, April the 16th, 1954, to this highly favored mystic in the church, approved. Uh, had so much to say uh, concerning the crisis in the church, concerning the crisis in the world, and we'll break down uh, some of these specific revelations here uh, in a minute. But I want to know in the comments section, who is your favorite mystic? Is it Marie Julie? Is it Padre Pio? Is it Blessed Sister Aiello? <clears throat> Is it someone like St. Joan? 
Is it someone like St. Francis of Assisi? Leave it in the description box, as well as your question comments below. And folks, before I get rolling, uh, I've been mentioning this uh, quite animately all over Tradcat Night and the social media. I am looking into running ads because a good number of you, the majority still really uh, aren't getting behind this apostolate. So in, in terms of the, the, the financial aspect of it, um, and to ensure ad-free content on Trad Cat Night, whether it be any, uh, truly anywhere, but specifically the YouTube channel and the uh, actual uh, blog page. And I realize it's, it's highly annoying, but unfortunately I have to go this route. Um, to ensure that we don't go that route, uh, you know, click that PayPal button, get behind this apostolate. If you don't want to do the PayPal route, uh, then you can always send me a private email for the email, uh, for the mailing address for cash, check, money order considerations. Um, but I will leave the direct donate button in the description box of the video and the comment section. And I am currently in talks with AdSense to uh, to see if I want to to move forward with that. So I just don't want anyone to come to me if, if it does go live, you know, in a week or two or, or or whatever, and say, you know, there's a glitch. There's all kinds of well. No, I, I, you know, th th there could be ads here popping up soon. Um, and I, th I believe it's every 10 cents that you click an ad, or for every uh, ad that you click, it would be 10 cents working towards uh, this apostle. So if you click 10 ads throughout the day, that would be like contributing a dollar. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but I, I really don't want to go that route. So I'm hoping that more and more of you can jump on board with this apostle again. We are really the only true traditionalist website out there that's maintaining what Archbishop Lefebvre and Father Hess uh, has said. The false right crowd does not. Uh, so uh, I encourage you all to continue to pray for me, but to get behind this uh, apostle financially. So let's get rolling right into what we want to talk about today, my good friends. There, are, there were many revelations given to this holy woman, right? Blessed Sister Aiello in Italy, uh, in which coincides, if you will, with the morning headlines or daily headlines of our times. She warned us from Jesus and Mary that the whole world seemingly has turned their backs on the Son, Jesus Christ himself, and that we would be on the verge of such cataclysms that the world has never seen before. So in this particular analysis that I'm giving here, based upon her 18... April 16th, 1954 message, if you will, and both Jesus and Mary talked to her during this day on Good Friday. I want to break down into sections the varying areas that our Lord and Lady covered. So these mini messages within this overall revelation, if you will, include the following topics. War is coming or on the horizon. Corruption of the youth. More penances needed. Churches opposed due to scandals. The great persecution coming, obstinate sinners, and divine chastisement. Now, how many people, my good traditionalists out there, outside of the traditional Catholic world, uh, do you know that truly do believe that we are on the verge of such punishments? I think it is wise, in my opinion, to recall some of these messages from time to time from these holy mystics in order to put into perspective our own salvation and the need in helping Jesus to convert others to the true faith, to take an active participation, right? If you will, by joining our hearts in with the Immaculate and Sacred Heart and participating in the work of redemption, if you will. Because in the most loosest sense, we truly are all co-redeemers with Christ in that very loose sense. That if we unify our hearts with his, he can use our sacrifices and sufferings, not only for our good purpose, for our own souls, but to help others. And so this is what pleases Jesus, if you will. This is what truly uh, makes his heart beam and radiate, if you will, when we, when we do this for him. And so let's dive right into the first topic of war is coming. Upon initiating the usual sufferings at about the hour of 1 p.m., in the afternoon, Jesus appeared to me, blessed Aiello says, covered with wounds and bleeding, saying to me, Behold my child, see to what ends the sins of man have reduced me. The world has lowered itself in overflowing corruption. 
the governments of the people have risen like demons incarnate. And while they speak of peace, they prepare for war with the most devastating implements to destroy peoples and nations. People have become ungrateful to my sacred heart and abusing my mercy have transformed the earth into a scene of crime. Does that, does that not sound like the liberal headlines of our own country? And so how many people are out there, and we're all guilty of this, most likely, concerning abusing God's mercy, at least at some time before in the past. And so, folks, I've had many conservative pundits, if you will, on my shows, podcast and virtually all of them say that war will not happen i'm surprised and shocked that this is what's going on in the false right circle scripture and prophecy clearly say otherwise the world is currently drowning or is drunk if you will off of the world's false peace program which is essentially running through the masonic socialist vatican these days Man's sins have been re have reduced God to such sorrow, which was even evident, folks, in the writings of Padre Pio in his beloved letter series. There's a three-volume set. You could read it for yourself. Three, four years before even Fatima spoke of, of an apostasy in the church. Jesus was very specific of Freemasonry infiltrating the church, and specifically Italy. And he was very much not happy, <laughs> to say the least. He was very ticked off. Uh, in those messages to P.O. It is hard to quantify, folks, just how bad we must look from heaven's perspective. And Jesus even indicated in this particular passage, passage that the governments of the people have become like demons. This is very strong language from Jesus. So we have to take a step back on the macro level, if you will, and ask ourselves what country is truly not in on the game, this overall conspiracy against Christ and his Catholic Church. Obviously, Italy is in on the game, specifically with the Vatican. Take a look at the world governments from around the world and who's not a Masonic puppet this, these days, who is not a Gentile Jewish collaborator, if you will. And all the evidence suggests that Putin and Trump are in on the game as well as part of this Chabad Jewish end time death cult. America has always been Masonic. We've always been Zionist stooges for the New World Order. And it seems quite evident that we're being dragged into further wars in the Middle East through Trump. And it's only going to get worse in my opinion. It's not going to stop with just Syria, of course. They speak of peace in general, folks, and they hold all of these meetings around the world. But in the end, it shall be for naught. We know this. Heaven's peace plan of getting Russia consecrated is not the same as what man is indicating to the world right now. Of course, Freemasonry has a different game plan for the world, their new Tower of Babel. And thus, we have to remember when you disobey Our Lady, you're ultimately disobeying what the Son wishes this is her time as so many saints have said she will be so vital in this transition if you will going from where we are currently to getting through this storm and then to re-establishing everything catholic back in the world jesus says specifically in this passage that the most devastating implements will be used take a look at the technology we that ha that we have these days far more advanced than world war ii they have technology right now that even that's 50 years ahead of what m mainstream is even purporting to the public. I've told you this before, but there have been Russian diplomats to come on and when they're threatening Brussels or some European country at certain points, this is in the past, you know, five, ten years or so, and even America, they could vaporize us in, in a half hour. And that that's not crazy talk. They have that type of technology, scalar technology. Fatima, furthermore, warned various nations would be annihilated. And it's the same with this particular message from our Lord to Blessed Aiello. He indicates this again. So here we go. When they shall say peace and safety. And what about the corruption of the youth, our second subtopic? 
Numerous scandals, this is Jesus talking again, numerous scandals are bringing souls to ruin, particularly through the corruption of the youth, stirred up and unrestrained in the enjoyment of pleasures of the world. They have degraded their spirit in corruption and sin. The bad example of parents trains the family in scandal and infidelity instead of virtue and prayer, which is almost dead on the lips of many. Stained and withered is the fountain of faith and sanctity of the home. Wow. That one paragraph will put goosebumps on your back, on the back of your neck. Seemingly, adults can't turn the TV on these days, at truly any point in the day, without being scandalized in some fashion. I was up late just the other uh, night recently, and this was on a, a major news channel, although it was local, but still, I think it was NBC or I forget what the local affiliate is. Anyway, catching the news, and, you know, sure enough, during the commercials, all types of indecent commercials are popping up left and right. We have to face the fact, folks, that our kids stand virtually no chance in this modern world if you attempt to try and stay attached to it. So we should truly ask ourselves, I know many traditionalists don't have TVs, um, you know, as we are going forward, and I can tell you for myself, certainly at a certain point, I will deem it, not safe to have a TV or be on the computer or this or that and be gone like the wind, so to speak. And so we have to ask ourselves this question, am I attached to these gadgets and gadgets? We've got the pedophiles, which are rampant these days, these Freemasons who have infiltrated the church. So who can trust our kids, even at the local level? I know there's a whole big shebang here in Steubenville, a crackdown, which is good, you know, on the surface. I'm glad to see the diocese doing this and just kind of in general, people looking out for each other uh, and so on and so forth. But, you know, everyone's kind of looking at each other with like strange eyes, like, you know, who are you? Are you a pedophile? Are you someone, you know, different than you claim to be? If I were a parent these days, it would be awfully difficult to trust anyone in the public sphere, if you will, given the numerous scandals that we are hearing both locally and in the world. And I'm sure it's no, no different in your own diocese and area. Modern man is all about pleasing itself, right? The New Age religion, that's what it is. It's the religion of self. They say so on shareinternational.org, the Antichrist website himself. Today, the parents are bad examples for the kids. So who the kids have to look to if their parents are bad? Well, oftentimes they'll kind of go to the TV and they'll look to their you know, a celebrity figure, my goodness, like the Lady Gagas of the world, so they'll take after them, or even the, 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 the sports people over our who are completely godless as well, for the most part. Taking into consideration as well, most who identify themselves as a Christian in this hour are heretics. It's that simple when you take a step back. Who is being trained right? in the proper norm of faith when the Vatican can't even get proper doctrine down right. Children are not striving for virtue in some instances because their parents aren't. Or maybe they don't even have parents. Or maybe they only have one parent. Jesus says prayer is almost dead in this particular passage. It is frightening, but it is true. Because we are a busy modern society who has no place for silence and solitude anymore. And yet, when the next war commences in the world, folks, we're going to hear the screams of the dying, if you will, replay over and over in our heads. We'll be seeing it on the TV. It'll be hard, it will be hard at that point to escape from the reality of our situation. The home is no longer a fountain of faith, as Jesus indicates. But now it's simply, or we can say it's simply a meeting place for those who just, quote-unquote, live with each other. Just passing by mom and dad, maybe talking to them for five minutes, not even sitting at the di dinner table anymore to see how their day was. I do believe, in general, I've said this over and over again, that the most, including traditionalists, are underselling just how bad it is in the world, but then also the crisis in the church, coming from the false right crowd. And perhaps this is because in their own little world that they have created, all is well. All isn't that bad. Just yet. We have to throw that caveat in there, of course. Now, the third sub subtopic is more penances. There must be more prayers. 
and penances from the souls faithful to me, Jesus says, in order to appease the just wrath and to temperate the just sentence of punishment suspended on earth by the intercession of my beloved mother, who is also the mother of men. Be not silent, my daughter, because the hours of darkness of abandonment are near. I am bending over the world, holding in suspension the justice of God. Otherwise, these things would have already come to pass now. Prayers and penances are necessary because men return to God and to my immaculate heart, the mediatrix of men to God. And thus the world will be at least in part saved. Wow, another powerful paragraph from this uh, revelation to Blessed Aiello. This should be common sense to any true traditionalist these days of the need for more reparation, more penances, more sacrifices. There is no more sin, so there is more sin, excuse me, so we must logically do more reparation. We have to go above and beyond what the church would normally ask us of these days. If you close your eyes and see our Lord being crucified all over again, in similar fashion, perhaps this will give you enough motivation to hold to the promises and the amendments that you have made within your own heart to help Jesus in the church. Our Lady has been holding back the hand of the Father, as Jesus indicates. She has been interceding for us for many decades now. But how much longer until the chalice of justice overflows? Like Blessed Aiello, we must not be silent. We all have to do our part. Love is proactive. Let us therefore first confess our own sin and hold to our amendment of daily life, but also let us go out into the world and tell people the good news. And I'm not just talking specifically the good news of the gospel and the true Catholic faith. I'm talking about the good news that in the end her immaculate heart will triumph. And the Antichrist is going to be thrown into the chasm, into the pits, if you will, along with his New World Order cronies, and they will be defeated. That's something to get excited about. I'm sure all of you would agree that justice has been long overdue, especially in this country, and those sufferings in times past in which you undertook, in which you thought were meaningless, yet in the grand scheme of, all, of it all, have helped to stave off God's wrath. That's right, there have been quite a few of you over the years who have been emailing me saying how consistently you've been suffering, just as I've been through the past 10 years, only this past six months. Uh, you know, it sort of feels like the, the storm clears to a certain extent for me. Been able to move around a little bit uh, better with this neurological syndrome. But due to your sufferings, your self selfless sacrifices, you are helping to stave off God's wrath. You are helping to convert. You're helping to graft people into the bosom of the church. That is the greatest sermon of all. Sometimes it's just laying on your back and allowing God to suffer through you. Our Lady says, at least part of the world will be saved. This is better than none at all, right? Isn't one soul worth it as Jesus taught in Scripture to go out and find that lost sheep? Therefore, we still have a lot of work to do, my friends. Now, the next topic or subtopic is the church is being opposed due to scandals. Wow. Talk about perfectly said for our times. Here we go. This is what Jesus says. The church is opposed and the priests are despised because of the bad ones who give to scandal. Help me by suffering to repair for so many offenses and thus save at least in part humanity precipitated in a sloth of corruption and death. How many of you have non-Catholic friends out there who always argue to you, well, I would never be Catholic due to all that corruption and scandals going on in the Vatican. And what I read about on the news, as if in those Protestant churches, there's no pedophiles and there are no uh, uh, homos. And there are, there is no, there's of course no sin going on in Protestant churches. And they failed to see clearly and realize that heretics such as themselves are worse than rapists and murderers put together. That's right. You heard me correctly, Protestant. I would rather 
be standing next to a homo Catholic, if you will, who's struggling with that sin than next to a Protestant heretic who obstinately rejects the true teachings of Jesus Christ, which have been transmitted down. You are worse than a rapist and a murderer put together. And that's why in the good old days and the medieval times, you saw what the church did, handed over heretics to the state to be put to death. And truly, that should come back into play. I see nothing wrong with that, as St. Thomas Aquinas agrees. Or in the very least, as I've told some Protestant recently, you should be in jail. You shouldn't be allowed to participate in suffering. You're murdering souls. And this is why God has to do what he has to do. Obviously, Catholics are no longer in control. So how do we get back into control? Well, God's going to wipe out the vast majority so that Catholics can get back in control. <laughs> to a certain degree, although in general this is wrong in terms of not converting to the Catholic faith because of corruption and scandals, uh, can, you blame when they, you know, can, they, can you blame them on the surface level when they say that? Again, corruption and scandals is not a good reason not to be Catholic because this is the only true faith since the beginning. This is the only faith which is pleasing to God. And thus, without it, as Scripture says, you cannot save your soul. The church is even opposed, even despised because of these scandals. And again, thanks to the Jews and Freemasons in the church playing pretend hijacking our buildings. I mean, they're giving the church a bad name. It's on purpose. They run the press. So on top of that, they'll run bad press coverage on the church. I mean, they're, they're, they're crucifying Jesus all over again through the church, using, you know, using the church as a means, if you will. So the church is going through another passion, as Father Malachi Martin indicate. Now, when you even read the daily church news, right, Novus Ordo news, you will see why Jesus is asking and calling for victim souls these days to help repair for the outrages coming from his own. Now, in the next particular section, we have to consider the great persecution, which still, for the most part, lies ahead of us. It says this, Cry out until the priests of God lend their ears to my voice, Jesus says, to advise men that the time is near at hand, hand, and if men do not return to God with prayers and penances, the world will be overturned in a new and more terrible war. Arms, most deadly, will destroy peoples and nations. The dictators of the earth, specimens infernal, will demolish the churches and desecrate the Holy Eucharist, and will destroy things most dear. In this impious war, much will be destroyed of that which has been built by the hands of men. Is there much crying out in the Novus Ordo Vatican II Church these days, folks? Or is it all charismatic -y? let's have a good time, let's get together, dunk our donuts and dialogue with the atheists and the sodomites and the Jews, all the enemies of the church, the Lutherans. Of course, Luther was a good guy. Who didn't know that? <laughs> of course, not according to their false theology, folks, and buying into their new socialist doctrines of Vatican II. They, they believe they truly can help revolutionize the world, if you will, or remold it, but it's in the wrong way. It's in that natural sense, as the pre-Vatican II popes warned about. They can't even figure out what they are following 99% of the time isn't even Catholic. And this, this is what makes our times so frightening. So we've got to continue to cry out, as Jesus says, until more and more of these objectively speaking unfaithful priests wake up. And folks, they will. I hear from them on a more regular basis, more so than what you would think. Jesus also reiterates yet again that a new war is coming. What about all these pundits like Jim Willie and some of these other false conservative types? We're not staving off war. You're insane to think. Jesus is not going to allow war. I can't tell you if it's this year. I can't tell you if it's two or three years from now. I think most traditionalists, you know, stretching, you know, going beyond five years might be a stretch. But it's more imminent now. Pray for God's mercy to stave it off even longer. But it is coming. I think it's safe to say that these warnings from God have gone unchecked for too long. The Novus Ordo party, if you will, is about to end. Charismatics beware. Jesus warns us that churches will be overrun, just like in scripture when he's talking about the great persecution. But 
perhaps in a loose sense, we can argue the great persecution has already begun when we take a look at some of the laws. We also, you know, the illicit laws being passed, uh, trying to put Christianity on the back burner, and ultimately they're trying to get rid of Christianity as we know it. But then take a look at ISIS and Islam. A lot of bloodshed outside of this country, folks. And again, just because it's not touching us here in America, my goodness, once it does hit us here in whatever particular form or fashion it is, we're gonna have to, we're gonna be crying out. You should be crying out now, but you will in the future. God is going to use war as a means to destroy the works of men. He makes that clear from this passage. He will allow the heretics in specifically people like Islam, to run over his churches so that he can show the world just truly how angry he is. When you give up on truth and you no longer want to hang on to that truth, God has to chastise. He has to show you just how important the truth is. But men don't like, want truth these days. They like their slush and their mush, as uh, Bishop Williamson says. They like their Willy Wonka land. That's the modern world summarized. Men have ears these days, but they don't listen because they're too preoccupied with earthly matters. Now, the next topic is obstinate sinners. Oh, sad. Oh, how sad is my heart, says Jesus, to see that men do not convert or respond to so many calls of love and grief manifested by my beloved mother to errant men. Jesus is weeping that people do not turn to the Immaculate Heart. Do you hear that, Protestants? No, you're not okay with Jesus. I don't care. You're telling me Jesus is dancing at your bedside with the angels and the Holy Ghost is throat. You're one breath away from hell. Roaming in darkness, Jesus says, they continue to live in sin and further away from God. But the scourge of fire is near to purify the earth of the iniquities of the wicked. Wow, that scourge of fire forewarned in Revelation 8 7. It's warned in Akita. It's warned in other, by various other mystics. This is why we pay attention to the sun. The justice of God, Jesus says, requires reparation for the many offenses and misdeeds that cover the earth and which no longer can be compromised. Men are obstinate in their guilt and do not return to God. End of quote. What could be worse than war, folks? An almost universal loss of faith. An almost universal subjective loss in faith in God in general. So the first part, a loss of faith when we're dealing with doctrine. The second, a subjective loss in faith, if you will, in God in general. We now have a world which doesn't want to pray. A world when it sees its own sins begins to beat its chest even louder. And scream, I will not change. I am self-sufficient. Right? Man's false city of security. Many are the knocks upon the doors of obstinate sinners daily. But unfortunately, the TV is too loud to hear over our Lord's voice. Jesus warns mankind that the scourge of fire is near. God has to purify and fire from the heavens is just the recipe or the remedy, if you will. What's sad, folks, is men know they are wrong, generally speaking, and yet they delight in being wrong. They value pleasure over interior peace. This is why God will allow such chaos and confusion and even war in the world. For what is happening on the surface level, if you will, with our natural eyes, with which we could see, is truly just a reflection of the everyday average heart in the world. It's full of darkness. It roams in confusion and chaos. It's not satisfied, so it has to jump from pleasure to pleasure and gidget to gadget. It can't sit still. And this is why God has to remove such from his sight. What about the divine chastisement? This is the last section. <clears throat> this is what is said in the Revelation. Clouds with lightning, flashes of fire in the sky, and a tempest of fire shall fall upon the world. This terrible scourge never before seen in the history of humanity will last 70 hours. 
Godless persons will be crushed and wiped out. Many will be lost because they remain in their obstinacy of sin. Then shall be seen the power of light over the power of darkness. So again, passing through the storm, getting to the other side of it, to the rainbow, so to speak. The power of light over the power of darkness. The power of love over self-love. Seemingly, of course, most traditionalists would argue we're talking about the three days of darkness here, and it's quite similar to Marie Julie Jehenny's account on the matter. And so as Planet X gets closer to this binary system, we're going to continue to see all types of weather anomalies, all types of celestial signs and wonders in the skies shortly before the acute destruction coming in the world. Now, what is sad is this, my friends. Most people don't even look up these days. Have you noticed that yourselves? I, too, <laughs> fall to a victim because sometimes I do get on my phone, you know, answering questions and checking emails. and I, My head stays down. People are always looking at their phones or are preoccupied with some worldly thing. Yet Jesus says of these times to lift your head for your redemption, redemption draweth nigh. He's telling you to look up at the skies. Ever see what's going up, going on up there these days, folks, with all the chemtrails or aerosol spraying of humanity? Now as these celestial event, events get greater, if you will, become uh, more and more visible to the majority, I believe more and more we'll pay attention to the skies after all. And in the end, a cross will be seen, as Father Malachi Martin indicated. This will be as Planet X is passing. It will show off or give... It will radiate basically a giant red cross in the sky. It will indicate to mankind that God is still in control. And it will also indicate to the Jews and all the enemies of the church that, you know, homie don't play that game, to put it into modern man's terms. God ain't playing games anymore. Your, your day is done and over with. So yes, God has to punish us, but he is purifying us. The godless, right, how do we, how do we quantify that? The godless, which includes all of the enemies of the church, that includes Protestants, are going to be wiped out largely. Now, there's some mystics who talk about there'll be some Protestants who having have heard similar messages such as this will kind of pre-prepare, if you will, for, for the three days of darkness, meaning they'll take it maybe somewhat serious, and then as we begin to see more and more of these signs, they'll, they'll actually do what Our Lady uh, suggests, and they will be protected, because this will be a spiritual protection in the end. And heretics won't receive that spiritual protection. So the goddess includes all the enemies of the church will be wiped out so that we eagles of our times can help restart or rebuild Christianity. This chastisement is needed because God knows man in general will not change. He knows at a certain point, and only he knows when that point is, that man just isn't going to come around by and large. So we have to call to mind our own sins daily. Be ready to change every day. Be ready to be, uh, be ready to adapt. That's one of the characteristics of being an eagle. We have to be ready to adapt with what God allows in our lives. There's going to be an awful lot of change. And I'm not talking about theological change or anything like that. I'm just talking about normal everyday living. So you are, to summarize it, folks, you are an eagle of these times, and don't forget your divine assignment and your divine assignment certainly is not to fall into doubt worry into the den of despair no people need to look to you to see your wings of faith and hope so that they are lifted up so to speak and they can be put on the right path and see and take First of all, the message of Fatima very seriously, but specifically here, here, of course, we're talking about this 1954 Good Friday message from Jesus and Mary to esteemed mystic sister, blessed Ayelo. Again, folks, that's all I have for you today. Again, this weekend, we've got Saturday, Father Voigt, 730, 845, Brian McCall, Sunday, I've got 730, Dr. Duke, 845, might have another special guest tba to be uh named later maybe again for those of you listening those uh who truly are following this apostle on a, on a daily basis i'd like to see uh, some co-hosts potentially maybe we could get a half a dozen people and we can all just sit back and have a candid conversation for that last hour and 15 minutes so email me if you're interested in becoming a co-host for sunday night show 8 45 to 10 p.m 
Apostle of Mary at hotmail.com. Let us not be duped by the false peace that is prevailing in the world. We, Christians are not pacifists. We're, we don't have this Protestant conception of Jesus. It's total, total phony baloney. And again, folks, in the end, if you'd like to ensure ad-free content here on YouTube and also on the Blogspot page, click that PayPal button. Get in this fight financially this is an information war and if you so click that paypal button uh and i forgot to mention this earlier every ten dollars goes towards one ticket in the monthly monthly end time raffle we'll do that the final day of the month i'll be announcing the winners publicly uh both in written format on social media but then also i'll be letting everyone know who won uh via one of the podcasts or the live call on show whatever comes first uh for the beginning of the month. So folks, until next time, stay safe. God bless. Keep your wings spread as an eagle in faith and hope. Ave Maria.